Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the second webinar in our web webinar series. This webinar, A Crooked Neck Will Take You Nowhere, aims to improve your everyday life at work by using simple techniques to improve your posture. We have with us Dr. Praveen Meereddy, consultant orthopedic surgeon at Care Hospitals. Dr. Praveen Meereddy has more than 16 years of experience in orthopedics. He did his MBS and MS orthopedics from Manipal University in Karnataka and completed his DNB orthopedics in India. He has worked in the US for 10 years and has MRCS and FRCS or ortho from Royal College of Surgeons, Edinburgh, and a master's in orthopedic surgery from Wrightington, UK. Dr. Praveen Me Reddy is a life member of Indian Orthopedic Association and has several publications to his credit. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you very much. We also have a Q&A session after the webinar. I now hand over the session, session to Dr. Praveen now. Thank you. Good evening, uh, everybody. At the outset, I would like to uh, Thank Care Hospital for giving me this opportunity to do this uh, webinar. Uh, it is a very important topic for uh, not only IT professionals, but for any of us who are uh, participating in a desk job or a sedentary lifestyle uh, kind of a job. So why is ergonomics important for any of us? Because if we follow the right posture, we should be able to work with the air efficiency and also, we could prevent developing any musculoskeletal disorders, mainly affecting the neck, shoulders, and the back. So, to begin with, ergonomics is predominantly important, not only at the workplace in engineers like in IT professionals, software professionals, but also for anybody who is working on a desk with a computer on, who sit for prolonged hours, like eight to 10 hours in front of the computer, there are certain things which we need to modify or adjust according to the posture. Initially, we will try and address what are the main issues with poor ergonomics as far as medical or health related issues are including eye related and symptoms like headaches and musculoskeletal disorders. And then we will also address any burning questions at the end of the session. So we briefly touched upon what is ergonomics and basically we will try and define ergonomics, establish the ergonomics in the workplace and introduce basic skills in the recognition and control of occupational ergonomic hazards and introduce some ergonomic exercises. What is the program goal? Well, to minimize injuries due to chronic physical and psychological stresses while maximizing productivity and efficiency. Ergonomics is nothing but it's the science of fitting the job to the worker. And biomechanics is the science of measuring the amount of force put on the muscles and joints when working in different positions. Something called as static and dynamic situations wherein in static there's holding one object or body part in one position for an extended period example standing or sitting in a parking booth or at a microscope for a long duration or sitting in front of the computer for a long duration in dynamic an activity that is created by rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the muscles for example walking so just a brief note on history as early as 1700s scientists were aware of repetitive movement injuries to workers Bernardino Ramazzini between 1633 to 1714 he has clearly mentioned that these musculoskeletal disorders or poor ergonomics have led to problems in clerks 
cobblers and tailors and porters. What are the study areas which we normally look at to define ergonomics? Mainly on the workers, what they bring to the job and the tools, what they bring to the worker. The other tasks, what the worker must, worker must do and in the environment surrounding where he's working, the conditions, what we need to alter. So the tool, the task and the workstation and the environment. So if somebody is not following their good ergonomic postures, they could develop cumulative trauma disorders or repetitive strain injuries or musculoskeletal disorders. Now, how serious can these musculoskeletal disorders be? They account for one third of all lost day injuries each year. These injuries cost business of about 15 to 20 billion dollars in the US as a workers compensation each year. And what are the common causes? Specifically sitting in front of the computer and doing repetitive activities like typing on the computer or concentrating on the screen. And awkward postures while sitting for a prolonged duration, people tend to develop different postures when they are sitting for extended time. And static postures where they don't move at all. And people who are working with instruments that cause vibration and in temperatures which that are poorly controlled like in a very hot or cold climate. Sitting for an extended time and forceful exertions. What are the signs? Patients do present to us with various symptoms like starting from pain in the muscles, decreased range of movement and loss of function and deformity sometimes when it is presenting late and muscle cramping decreased grip strength especially in the hand and fingers and loss of balance swelling and redness around joints or along the muscles so the muscle fatigue we already briefly mentioned about aching and burning numbness stiffness and tingling so each area gets affected based on how efficiently we are utilizing the muscles when we are working on various things. What are the common examples we come across in the clinical practice? For example, a patient came to me with severe pain which is radiating to the upper limb from the neck backwards and then again forwards on the front of the arm and forearm. After thorough examination, patient was actually having a poor posture and this was causing some crowding of the what we call as thoracic outlet where there was a small cervical rib predominantly when there is a cervical rib which is a bony outgrowth from the spine can cause pressure on the nerve roots when there is poor posture so the simple treatment option for this would be to try and do what we call as strengthening exercises for the neck and back muscles to avoid that poor posture and the patient got relieved of the symptoms within six weeks. So the other common conditions which we come across are tendonitis where there is inflammation of the tendon typically occurs in shoulder, wrists, elbow or hands. Another common condition where people work with the wrist flexed on the computer is what we call as carpal tunnel syndrome which is nothing but there is over crowding of the tunnel wherein there is a nerve which supplies the sensation on the thumb index and middle fingers and also supplies the muscles of the what we call as a thin or eminence so this when there is irritation of the median nerve it causes symptoms in the fingers like pain paresthesias which means pins and needle sensation in the fingers and sometimes it can lead to muscle weakness if it is unrecognized and this gives rise to various other symptoms like something called as a double crush syndrome wherein people also have neck 
symptoms and pressure in the neck nerve roots because of the faulty posture and this happens commonly because we are working for prolonged hours on the computer with the wrist flexed there are other conditions of course which cause carpal tunnel syndrome but commonly we do see overuse strains and sprains around the wrist and this is the picture which is demonstrating the course of the median nerve with the ligament on the top and the tendons which are below the carpal uh, below the carpal ligament what we call as the flexor retinaculum the other common condition what we come across is what we call as a trigger finger syndrome which is nothing but the tendon sheath which is a protective layer which helps in smooth gliding of the tendon which connects the joints and the fingers when we start overusing it it can get inflamed the sheath can get inflamed and it can cause pressure on the tendon itself and cause something called as triggering which can cause pain sometimes if neglected it can become what we call as a locked trigger finger which will need surgical intervention to release it initially stretching exercises could be tried sometimes injections do work otherwise the final option would be to consider surgery for this condition even in carpal tunnel syndrome if the symptoms do not improve with non-operative treatment with modification of workplace and using splintage still if it does not improve the ultimate treatment would be to go for surgery if it is a persistent problem now eyes get strained along with uh, people complaining of lot of headaches when we work with uh, poor lighting and glare or viewing the computer from awkward positions the other common uh, symptoms which they present with are nerve type of symptoms wherein there is just tingling numbness with loss of dexterity in the hand or arm without any obvious focal neurological deficits muscle strain is again a equally important condition i think most of the patients do come across with pain that is related to muscles especially around the neck and the low back and mid back as well normally we do have various curves in the spine there is something called as a primary curve and something called as a secondary curve when we look at the spine as demonstrated here in this if you see this is the primary thoracic curve that means it is in the upper back and then the secondary curve is your cervical lordosis that means your head is always lifted up slightly and the back upper back is bent backwards and the lower back is bent forwards so these curves need to be maintained while sitting standing and walking which is not very easy when you are sitting because there is a tendency for us to slouch and this is a picture of cervical spine having this vertebrae the bones with the discs in between and the blood vessels which are demonstrated here in the neck the important structures which can get trapped over a period of time if you develop faulty postures and you develop something called as degenerative disc disease which can happen because of poor muscle balance and lack of specific focused neck exercises they can lead to degenerative disc disease causing new bone formation at the back and also joints behind the um, neck what we call as facet joints they can get arthritis and ultimately leading to canal stenosis that means the canal which passes or which allows the nerve roots can get trapped because of the tightness in the canal the nerve roots can get entrapped and this gives rise to pain not only in the nerve but the nerve that supplies the muscle because for a muscle to move the nerve need to be functional so the nerve gets entrapped and the pain is referred to the muscle so a lot of patients come and complain about muscle pain more than nerve pain but nerve pain is really intolerable and that again needs to be evaluated and treated accordingly coming to the lower back what we call as the lumbar spine the common levels which get affected in the neck it is c5 c6 which is the common level in the lumbar spine it is the l5 and s1 or sometimes l4 and l5 these are the levels which get affected again as demonstrated in this picture you can see that 
the nerve roots that are coming out at every level can get trapped from the disc which is protruding backwards or the facet joints which become arthritic and the canal the normal room which you can see here can become smaller and tighter as the age progresses but these are degenerative conditions now why we are talking about degenerative conditions in young active men and women who are IT professionals and um, doctors or any other professional who is sitting on the computer and working on the computer well if you let go of these faulty postures over a period of time and if you neglect your spine mainly the cervical and lumbar spine we all can develop degenerative disc disease with canal stenosis with symptoms which cause pain radiating to the upper limb or lower limb the lower limb is commonly called as sciatica as you can see in this picture there are multiple muscles which protect the neck and the spine and all have good blood supply and nerve supply for them to function normally the other image which you can see here is picture which is demonstrating the muscles on the upper back and the front of the chest and the shoulders now we'll talk more about the postures in a minute but before that again you can see as doctors we come across patients complaining of pain in a particular localized area and we will be able to assess them looking specifically for nerve related symptoms sensations in the arms fingers and muscle strength and reflexes to be able to diagnose where the level of the problem is however to confirm this diagnosis we may need to do further investigations in the form of plain radiographs that is x-ray of the cervical spine or the lumbar spine or sometimes the dorsal spine which is the upper back and we ask for appropriate investigations like mri when required mri is usually indicated in somebody who has persistent radicular pain that means pain radiating along the arm along with some numbness or weakness that is not responding to treatment now how we can sort these issues out what can we do we need to sort few administrative controls and also practice at uh, workplace controls modify them and engineering controls also we need to adjust so we need to try and achieve these by expanding the job tasks and rotating the employees and physical adjustments to the workplace and redesign of work methods and alternative tasks and taking breaks appropriately while you are at workplace and safe and proper work techniques and procedures need to be followed to achieve this and proper training should be given along with physical conditioning period now there are some safe way of doing ways of doing things and there are unsafe ways of doing things avoid lifting anything away from the body and you need to bring any object close to the body and you can actually bend on your knees rather than bending your back when you're trying to lift things that is one simple modification as demonstrated in this picture this is not a good posture and this is a better posture as demonstrated here whether your tasks are performed while sitting or standing always maintain proper posture and angles and avoid awkward positions as mentioned before and try and avoid reaching for uh, things which are far off and trying to achieve extreme movements to achieve those and trying to multitask is a good thing but not like this again here you can see that the gentleman is stretching all his shoulder muscles to reach the desktop whereas this is more comfortable it is at the level eyes are at the correct level and less muscles are functional here in this image again this lady bending forward is not a great idea feet on the ground is good thing with the knees bent and the chair should be approximately between 90 and 120 degrees crossing legs for a short period is fine stretches is fine but um, again for long duration is not appropriate so at the workstations and tools or equipment and facilities how to modify the objective is to fit the workstation to the employee and reduce awkward positions 
So the best thing to do is to have an adjustable workstation, adjustable chair, footrests, along with adjustable monitor and a document holder, which is not far off from. So just there is, these are the tips which are uh, mentioned for an ergonomic computer workstation. Use a good chair with a dynamic chair back and sit back in this. Top of monitor casing should be two to three inches above the eye level and no glare should be there on the screen. Use an optical glass anti-glare filter where needed. Sit at uh, arm's length from the monitor. Feet on the floor or stable footrest. Use a document holder, preferably in line with the computer screen. Wrist should be flat and straight in relation to the forearms to use. Keyboard or mouse or input device. Arms and elbows should be relaxed close to the body. Center monitor and keyboard in front of you. Use a negative tilt keyboard tray with an upper mouse platform or downward tilt. Use a stable work surface and stable keyboard tray. Take frequent short breaks, call as micro breaks, at least for a few minutes and then get back to work. This is again poorly lit. You need some light, but again, too much glare is not good. Now, when you're using force or using grip strength, take longer or shorter and thicker or thinner handles. Repetitive motion, ratcheting mechanism or gears and power tools, electrical stapler, electric knife or spring load returns are better. Awkward positions should be avoided. So bent or curved handles, extensions or add-ons, headphones, support equipment, overhead and step stool and forceful exertions like soft touch keyboards, buttons and lifting devices. So try and bend the device or tool rather than the wrist. Use tools that distribute pressure evenly across the palm. Avoid bending over your work. Avoid overhead work. Use a ladder when required. Like in this, a foot step stool being used. When you're in static positions, try and use anti-fatigue mats. And when you're dealing with vibration, use anti-vibration materials, anti-vibration mounts or handles, and external support, anti-vibration gloves. Avoid too much loud, uh, light and glare. Appropriate temperature control should be maintained. Should not be working in a noisy environment. And some of the exercises which I would like to share with you and uh, there are some stretches which are very useful. So eye comfort exercises like blinking, yawning or changing the focus are useful when you have been looking at the computer screen for long hours. While seated, brace your elbows on the edge of the desk. Let weight fall forward. Cup hands over eyes and close your eyes. Inhale slowly through the nose and hold for four seconds. Continue deep breathing for 15 to 30 seconds. This is called as eye palming, like as it is demonstrated here. Again, do repetitive eye movements. Close your eyes and slow and gently move eyes up to the ceiling, then slowly down to the floor. Repeat three times. Close your eyes and slowly and gently move your eyes to the left, then slowly to the right and repeat these three times. Tilt your ear towards the shoulder. Reach up and touch top of the head with palm to hold in tilted position. Hold five to ten seconds. Repeat two to three times. Come out of the stretch very slowly, reverse the side and repeat the exercise like demonstrated here. The other thing is doing overhead reaches. Take a deep breath and reach up overhead with both the arms. Hold for five to 10 seconds. Exhale and lower slowly. Repeat two to three times. The other thing what you could do is do something called as a shoulder pinch wherein you place your arms behind being careful not to press the hand onto the head. Relax the shoulders and squeeze your shoulder blades together while keeping shoulders back and down. Hold for five to 10 seconds. Repeat two to three times. 
as demonstrated here. Shoulder shrugs, sitting upright. Slowly bring shoulders up towards your ears. Hold position for five to 10 seconds. Then bring the shoulders down and hold. Repeat two to three times as demonstrated in this picture. Chair rotation stress, stretch, sit in chair and place feet flat on the floor. Reach across your body and grab the back of the chair. Pull gently to increase stretch in mid back. Hold five to 10 seconds. Repeat five times. Repeat on the other side as demonstrated here. Arms behind the back stretch. Hold hands behind the back and grasp hands together. Pull shoulder blades back and down. Hold for five seconds. Repeat it five times as demonstrated here. You can do prop ups or press ups. Foot rotations while sitting upright. Slowly rotate each foot from the ankles three times in one direction. Then rotate three in the opposite direction. Start doing the wrist flexion and extension stretches wherein hold the arm straight at waist height with fingers of the other hand gently press down above the knuckles bending the wrist down. Do not hold the fingers at that level to push them down. Hold 5 to 10 seconds and repeat 2 to 3 times for extending. Hold on to palm of hand and stretch wrist back. Do not pull on fingers. Hold for 5 to 10 seconds and repeat 2 to 3 times as demonstrated here. Hold close to the wrist rather than at the level of the knuckles or below. Same thing demonstrated this the extension exercises. Very gently you could massage the fingers of each hand individually. Move toward the nail gently. Massage the space between your fingers what we call the web space to widen and relax. Finger squeeze is another way of uh, stretches. Squeeze a foam block or the edge of your desk firmly with all the fingers. Hold for three seconds, relax your grip. You have to maintain this regular program to achieve success in ergonomics training and uh, should have proper hazard information and reporting and job hazard analysis and control and training along with um, musculoskeletal disorder management as required and the program needs to be evaluated. If anybody has any questions, please do ask and do not hesitate to ask the questions. Thank you. One question. How long do you recommend that uh, we do these exercises while at work? If you are working for eight hours, obviously at least one or two sessions in that eight hour period should be good enough. Now, should we do all the exercises that you prescribed at once? Not all, depending on where they are developing symptoms, we should focus on that and avoid getting those symptoms first by prevention. So if you start getting the symptoms, definitely we should be able to uh, work on particular areas where you are feeling to get the symptoms. Please let us know if you have any additional questions. Just ask you. Could you tell us about where the word ergonomics came from? Yeah, it uh, came from uh, Greek language, basically ergos and uh, nomos. So workplace and being normal workplace or at a good setting where there is a good experience at uh, workplace. I think that's where, it, that's where it came from, ergonomics. Thank you very much for participating in this webinar. I hope it is uh, useful for you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Praveen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending this session. I hope this webinar has helped you understand ergonomics in a totally new light. Please do share your feedback and comments with us on Facebook and Twitter. Good night. Thank you.